Hello students, I heartily welcome you to the online platform of the Department of Chemistry Vivekananda College, Kolhapur. So in the last online Zoom meeting, already we have discussed about what is the exact syllabus of the BSc third year. Again, we have discussed about examination pattern and uh, so many other things that we have discussed in the last Zoom online meeting. So now, from this module, we are directly going to start the actual syllabus. So now, uh, in this module, we are going to start one of the very interesting topic, which is named as a bio inorganic chemistry. This topic belongs to the paper number five of the semester fifth. And uh, this paper is entitled as physical and the inorganic chemistry. And we know that in this particular paper, there are two sections. Section one, uh, it is a physical chemistry and section second, it is about the inorganic chemistry. And the bio inorganic chemistry, it is unit number five from the section second, that is inorganic chemistry. Now we'll just start about this topic, which is one of the very interesting topic uh, because this topic is closely related to our body. This topic is closely related to the uh, biological process uh, which are happening in the animals as well as in the plants. So this is the syllabus of this topic. We'll discuss some introductory portion of this um, bio, what is bionorganic chemistry and some uh, introductory part of the bionorganic chemistry. Then we'll discuss about essential and the trace elements in the biological process. Then metalloporphyrins with special reference to the hemoglobin and the myoglobin, which is one of the very important point of this topic. Then we'll discuss about the role of the metal ions present in the biological system with special reference to the sodium, potassium, magnesium and the calcium. So it does mean that here we'll discuss about how the sodium, potassium, magnesium and calcium plays their role in the biological process. So now next we'll discuss about the sodium and potassium, sodium potassium pump which is one of the very important concept uh, which comes under the bioinorganic chemistry. Then we'll discuss about the role of the magnesium ions in the energy production and chlorophyll. And the last point of this topic will be the role of the calcium in the blood clotting. So this is our syllabus and uh, whole points or all the points we have to discuss one by one in detail. So now uh, from the for the first module, we'll just start the general introduction of the topic bioinorganic chemistry. So now before going to start uh, some advanced concept and some other things uh, which comes under this topic, we'll just look at what is the exact meaning of the bioinorganic chemistry. So students, bioinorganic chemistry is the branch of the chemistry which deals with the study of the role of metals and the non-metals in the biological process. So in another way, we can say that bioinorganic chemistry is a field that examines or studies the role of the metals and the non-metals in the biological process. Basically, there are only 30 to the 40 elements utilized in the biological process. Not all, because we know that in the periodic table, there are more than 118 elements and all the 118 elements are not utilized in the biological process, but only around 30 to the 40 elements which are uh, useful and they are utilized in the biological process. So now let us go to the next point that is, uh, types of the elements. So depending on the use of the particular element in the biological process, there are different type of the elements. Uh, so this different type of the elements that we'll discuss here. So first type of the element is the essential elements. So essential element. So these are the elements which are absolutely necessary for the life processes generally called as an essential element. So means uh, these elements are actually utilized in the biological process and therefore it is called as essential element. So there are a number of essential elements that we'll discuss later. We have to see the different examples of the essential elements. Next point that is a next type that is a non-essential element. So it is very simple again the elements which don't have any role in the biological process or we can say that the elements which don't have any positive role in the biological process is called as a non-essential element. So it does mean that uh, if there is a absence of these elements in the biological process, then there will be no any type of the ill effect to the biological process. So, uh, but if there is a presence of this element, then also these elements will not have any ill effect or will not have any positive effect to the biological process. And therefore it is called as a non-essential element. So means these elements are not utilized in the biological process. So now the next one is the toxic elements. So toxic elements, it is again very simple as like the name of this category that is toxic elements means elements neither essential nor beneficial and it may cause the ill effect to the biological process. Means these elements are not utilized in the biological process. Absolutely there is no need of these elements 
uh, in the biological process if such elements are present in the biological process then it causes the ill effect to the biological process so therefore it is called as a toxic elements so now this essential element further categorized into different parts so that we will discuss next so these are the some categories of the essential elements so first we will discuss about the most essential elements means essential element further classified into some uh, different categories so we'll discuss uh, these categories one by one so first category is the most essential elements so most essential element means uh, these elements are very much uh, important uh, for the biological process means they are utilized in the biological process and if there is absence of these elements then it may cause ill effect to the biological process and therefore it is called as a most essential element means these elements must be present so because these elements plays very important role in the biological process now second category which is actually not category but i have made this category that is not most essential element means uh, they are essential but not uh, most essential okay so uh, these uh, these elements uh, whose presence helps the growth and the reproduction system in the biological process but it has no ill effects so means it just only support the growth or reproduction system of the any biological process but it has no ill effect it means if there is absence of one of the element from this category then it will not affect badly uh, to the biological process so it just only uh, we can say that it is just only the supporting element now the next type is the bulk element so it is again very simple one the elements which are required in the bulk quantity or in the larger quantity in the biological process is called as a bulk element so there are elements like a sodium potassium calcium magnesium so these elements are used in the large scale in the biological process or they are utilized in the large scale in the biological process and therefore these elements are called as a bulk element so now the next type is the trace and the ultra trace element so trace and ultra trace elements these elements needed in the low and the very low concentration in the biological process and therefore it is called as a trace and the ultra trace elements so elements like a manganese iron cobalt copper so we can say that uh, transition elements so these transition elements and some elements from the p block so these elements are uh, utilized in the trace and ultra trace quantity and therefore they comes under the category trace and the ultra trace elements next category is the metals because we know that uh, there are metals non metals and metalloids in the periodic table and uh, all the type of the element, elements are necessary in the biological process so means generally uh, in the essential element there are metals just like sodium potassium calcium magnesium vanadium chromium so these metals are essential one there are some non metals also so these non metals like a carbon silicon nitrogen oxygen phosphorus so these are the non metals uh, they comes under the category of the essential elements so these are the various types of the essential elements uh, that we can categorize so uh, this is the periodic table and according to the periodic table uh, we know very well about uh, which elements are placed at which side uh, we know this so this is block d block p block and so these are the some halides uh, or uh, these are the some uh, uh, nobel elements we can say that so the elements which have a purple and the green color so these elements are essential elements for the biological process uh, they are essential in the plant as well as in the animals and whatever other uh, elements rather than these color that is the purple and the green the remaining elements are non essential elements they are not required in the biological process so now the next point we'll discuss about abundance of the essential elements so abundance of essential elements means what uh, which element present in which quantity or in which amount in the particular biological process so that we, we have to discuss under the category or under the point abundance of the essential elements see uh, there are uh, different abundance of the elements in the different plant as well as in the different animals but here just we have taken one example that is uh, we have taken biological system here that is human being we have taken as a biological system for our sake of convenience and we are just uh, uh, discussing here uh, in how much quantity the elements are present in the human being so here we have taken the example that is approximate elemental composition of a typical 70 kg human so typical 70 kg human we have taken as our biological system and in this uh, typical 70 kg of human what is the quantity of the element that we are discussing here so just see here so first there are bulk and the elemental mineral ions so bulk and elemental mineral ions uh, 
we know that bulk elements so bulk elements they are present in a bulk quantity in the biological process or they are utilized in the bulk quantity in the biological process and they are pretty called as a bulk elements see the example oxygen so around uh, if uh, human have a 70 kg weight then it uh, this uh, this human contains uh, 44 kg of the oxygen means it is around 65% uh, by weight means uh, out of the 70 kg 44 kg weight will be up because of the oxygen then uh, 12.6 kg weight is because of the carbon it is around 18% hydrogen is around 6.6 kg that is around 10% nitrogen is around 1.8 kg that is around 3% calcium 1.7 kg it is around 0.31 percent phosphorus is around 680 gram that is 1.1 percent potassium is around 250 gram that is 0.35 percent then chlorine 115 gram uh, which is around 15.15 percent sulfur 100 gram which is around again 0.15 percent see these are the approximately not exact um, values of uh, each and every element so now uh, just go to the uh, so remaining elements are again present in the 0.25 percent and 0.01 percent again there are some trace and ultra trace elements also present in the human being or uh, as a biological system so uh, all these element uh, just uh, contain 1% weight of the 70 kg human being so means uh, these elements are trace and ultra trace element that is just uh, see the example of iron around 5000 mg of iron is present in the human being which have a 70 kg weight means around 5 g 5 mg means it is around 5 g and similarly we can just uh, look at the uh, quantity of the different type of the trace elements and ultra trace elements present in the human body see uh, each and every element have their own role these elements are not present in the body a uh, only just uh, to exist there but uh, they plays their role and there is much more importance of each and every element for, for better functioning of the uh, our body or better functioning of the any biological system so now the next point is the biological role of the essential elements see uh, this is also one of the very interesting point uh, because we know that there are 30 to the 40 elements and which are most essential one and all the elements we are not going to uh, just discuss here but we have to highlight the role of the some important elements okay so uh, this role of the important elements that we will discuss in the next uh, module it is one of the very interesting point uh, i hope that uh, you will be uh, continuously uh, learning you will be continuously enjoying uh, the sessions and uh, thank you very much keep learning we'll discuss this point in the next module thank you